Hare Krishna. Greetings from Mayapur, the birthplace of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. I hope uh, all is well in Zagreb. Om Agyanati Vananda Syagyananjana Shalakaya Kshakshurun Militam Jaina Tasma Shri Gurave Namaha Shri Chaitanya Manobhishtam Sapitam Yena Bhutale <coughs> Swayam Rupa Kadama Yam Dadati Swapatantigam Vandeham Shri Guru Shri Uttapada Kamalam Shri Guru Vaishnavam Shri Shri Rupam Sagrajatam Sahagana Raghunatam Vitam Tam Sajivam Sadvetam Savadutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padan Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishakam Vitam Shcha He Krishna Karuna Sindho Dinabandho Jagatpate Gopesha Kupika Kanta Radha Kanta Namostute Tapta Kanchana Gaurangi Radhe Vrindavanishwari Vrishabhanu Sute Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Vanchakalpaturu Vascha Kripa Sindhu Vyayavacha Patinam Pamani Vyo Vaishnavivyo Namo Namaha Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadar Shri Vasati Gaura Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Ram Hare Ram 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 Hare Hare So today's class is called Jean-Paul Sartre, Led Zeppelin and um, Krishna. <laughs> so what's the connection? What's the connection between Jean-Paul Sartre, the atheist existentialist who we could say hurt France so much. Um, and Led Zeppelin, by the way, I gave a Bhagavad Gita once to Robert Plant, the, the lead singer of Led Zeppelin. I gave him a Bhagavad I sold him a Bhagavad Gita for $30 in the Los Angeles airport. And the teachings of Krishna. Well, let me, let me tell you a story. This is really personal, but <clears throat> I think it's a, it's a good um, it's a good example. Um, I was going to start this lecture by talking about something that happened to me last summer, where I um, I got robbed in Berlin, and um, I, I I suffered a, a, a foot injury while trying to run after the the thief. And, um, but I'll tell you something else that happened in my life that's very close to my heart because it's, it's, I'm still, you know, I'm traumatized by it, but I think it illustrates, um, the theme of this class, which is basically that, you know, we are responsible for our life. We are responsible for our life. And that's what Jean-Paul Sartre teaches, Led Zeppelin teaches, and Krishna teaches. So, um, five years ago, my father passed away. I received, uh, I received an inheritance, a large inheritance in the hundreds of thousands of euros. And uh, foolish as I was, or gullible as I, as I was, um, I trusted, I trusted a Vaishnava, uh, someone who called himself, calls himself a, a devotee. I guess to some degree he is a devotee. Um, I'm not going to you know, give you names or details of where he's from and so on and anything, but the point is I trusted him, you know, he said, I have a great opportunity for you and you don't have to sign a contract with me and I promise you because you're like family, I've known you for so many years that, you know, if this business venture um, goes bad, I'll pay you, I'll give you back your entire investment from my own pockets, but don't worry, I'll make you a millionaire with this. And he said the same pitch to actually two or three other people in, in another country. And we both, we all, we all fell for it, trusted him. And uh, I literally gave him my entire father's inheritance, all of it. Um, long story short, five years later, um, I still haven't seen a cent. I still haven't seen a cent. And now, you know, it's just, it's been very traumatic and the rhetoric has changed all of a sudden. No, no, you know, you invested and, and you know, the business went bad and I have no responsibility to give you anything. I may give you something out of my own kindness of heart because, you know, I'm a good guy. Long story short, I've lived five years just in this part of my life, um, a very traumatic experience, a very traumatic experience. 
Now, we all go through traumatic experiences in our lives, and I don't think there's a single person, even with like super, 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 super so-called good karma. I mean, some of us suffer more than others, that's a fact. You know, some of us do get handed, a, you know, they say you, you get a card, a, a, you get dealt a cards, a deck of cards. So some of us do have, you know, a better deck of cards in this temporary world where we do, you know, perhaps suffer slightly less than somebody else. It's a fact. There is gradations of, of um, material happiness and unhappiness in this world. Um, I remember, for example, I, I was having lunch uh, at the Los Angeles Iskon Govinda's restaurant some years back with uh, Bakta Henry. Bakta Henry is, a, is an old boy who never got, got married. Um, he's maybe in his late 50s now. Uh, from one of the richest families in the United States of America, one of those families that go back all the way to the founding fathers. And he lives in a gorgeous uh, colonial house in the heart of Washington, D.C., which and the place itself is a national monument. Like he can't, if he wanted to, you know, do some uh, change of design in it, he can't change it because it's actually like protected by the U.S. government because I think Thomas Jefferson lived there or something. Anyway. I was having lunch with him a few years ago. I always remember this. We were having lunch and he, he was on his way. Once a year he goes to Hawaii from Washington, D.C. Of course he can afford it. He's, you know, multi, multi, multi billionaire or millionaire at least. And, um, and so he was, as he does every year, on the way to Hawaii, stopping in Los Angeles to go uh, to the Rathiatra, to the Rathiatra. And so, and so we were having lunch and I always remember this. You know, he was telling me and he was dressed, you know, in his, in his nice, normal, Anyway, it doesn't matter how he was dressed. He was telling me, look, I know people. He was saying in my, you know, jet set or old, old money circles, I know people who have such good karma. Like they go to the best schools, they have loving parents, they're super happy, they're beautiful, handsome, intelligent, and they get into the best universities and they get flying colors. And as soon as they get out of university, they get to the best, you know, graduate program. And that's exactly when they meet their, you know, their, their girlfriend or their boyfriend who is also super beautiful and happy. And, and then they get married in a perfect time. And then they have these beautiful children. And it's just like one thing after another, boom, 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 falls into place. So that's, you know, there are some people like that. Uh, and then there's other people who, you know, who suffer a lot more. But my point is that all of us, all of us, all of us uh, have experienced setbacks, have experienced frustrations. Um, and these frustrations often are directed towards somebody else, somebody else, not just, you know, the stars or the trees or, I mean, trees are persons, but, you know, it's usually the agency of our suffering usually comes in the form of another human being, right? Whether it's an abusive father, or whether it's an abusive mother, or whether it's a, a so-called business, loving business partner who cheats you out of your money, or whether, whatever, you know what I mean? So, how do we deal with, with, with setbacks, and how do we deal with, uh, with, with, with suffering that just kind of falls upon us, right? Jean-Paul Sartre, Funny enough, you know, he said, a f he said a lot of stupid things. One of the things he said was, L'enfer, c'est les autres, which means hell is the other. Hell is others. Hell is, you know, everybody else. And, um, I mean, as Krishna conscious people, we would not really agree. I mean, it depends who is the other. You know, if, you're, if the other in, uh, across the table is a, is a great saint, uh, that then that's not hell. On the contrary, it's it's Vaikuntha. It's a spiritual world to have a an advanced devoted soul next to you. Um, so it just goes to show that he would make this generalization that hell is others. Um, just just just, just, just it goes to show where you know where his consciousness with that was at. But to give him credit, he was saying this in the context of um, of of one thing which I think is very intelligent that he said. This Jean Paul Sartre. Um, he said that we are, we are thrown into this world. Nous sommes jetés dans ce monde. We are literally like dropped into this world. And that we, and we alone, have full responsibility for our destiny in this life. We alone are responsible. 
And it's and, and so that this was like a pretty big move in the history of, of philosophy where you know all of a sudden the the onus is on the individual and, and there's, there's 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 no one else responsible for your decisions, for your destiny, for your projection in life, I mean for your direction in life than you yourself, right? Sort of a wake up call. Like don't blame, you know, the Germans or don't blame this or don't blame their, you know, your parents or don't blame the fault is is ultimately, or the, the responsibility is yours because you're dropped into now. Why are we dropped in this world? Of course, Jean Paul Sartre, you know, didn't address that, and uh, and that was his, you know, his 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 lack of of, of wisdom, we could fairly say. Um, why we're here? I mean, that's like one of the big questions of theology that that everyone, every religious person asks. Um, now we'll deal with that a little bit later. At least he said that, that you know, we are thrown in this world and we have to assume responsibility. Now, as I'll show you in the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says the exact same thing. Krishna says the exact same thing. Um, but Krishna's not the only person who says that. Led Zeppelin. <laughs> Led Zeppelin says the same thing. Um, there's one song by Led Zeppelin called It's Nobody's Fault But Mine. And it goes like this. It's nobody's fault but mine. It's nobody's fault but mine. Um, actually had a clip of it for you, but it didn't work with, uh, with, with the phone I'm using and stuff. So I guess you've been spared hearing a, 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 an excerpt of Led Zeppelin. As a matter of fact, I'm, I'm here with Mahajvala from Split. You know, we're sharing an apartment here together in, in my airport during the lockdown and I was playing this song just before going live and he opened his door with a big smile as he's always smiling he was like what's that what's that <laughs> and I was like it's, it's a Led Zeppelin song he's like oh I used to be into into um, into what do you say into uh, another like really hardcore band Metallica or, or um. anyway the point is Led Zeppelin wrote this song of all the songs that they wrote there's one song called, It's Nobody's Fault But Mine. And that statement echoes what Jean-Paul Sartre is saying. It echoes what Jean-Paul Sartre is saying. That, you know, if, 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 if a soul, if somebody finds himself or herself in a, in a difficult situation, right? Um, according to Jean-Paul Sartre, according to Led Zeppelin, um, it's, it's that soul's fault. Now, we don't necessarily accept Jean-Paul Sartre. I hope we don't. And we don't necessarily also accept, you know, Led Zeppelin as our, as we say in Sanskrit, Brahmana, as our, you know, uh, authority, as our authority to base our arguments on or to make our decisions from. But we do accept the Bhagavad Gita. We do accept Krishna. And... Here I want to read to you a verse from the 13th chapter, uh, verse 21. And um, this verse goes like this. Karya karana kartritve hetu prakritir utchate purusha sukhaduka nam boktritve hetur utchate. Prabhupada translates it as follows. I'll read you the whole verse and then we'll dissect it. Nature, so in other words, material nature. Nature is said to be the cause of all material causes and effects. Whereas the living entity is the cause of the various sufferings and enjoyments in this world. So Krishna is describing two things in this verse. He's saying that he's describing the causes, the causes of life, the causes of this world, and especially the causes of our own suffering and our own happiness. And, and this reminds me, I'll have to speak a little bit about Bhaktivinoda Thakur's critique of Christianity on this very point, if you indulge me. So, in this verse, Krishna says that nature, material nature, material nature, which is an energy of God, we believe, material nature is the cause of the causes and effects of this world. 
In other words, material nature is the enabler. Material nature, let's say, creates the stage on which, you know, we can go and dance or act. You know, Shakespeare used to say, right, in that famous quote from Shakespeare, out, out, brief candle, life is but a walking shadow, a poor player that struts and frets his hour upon the stage and then is heard no more. It is a tale told by an idiot full of sound and fury, signifying nothing. So Krishna here in the Gita is saying that Mother Nature basically sets up the, 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 the stage. Okay, And then the second part of this verse, which is fantastic and which echoes Led Zeppelin and, and Jean-Paul Sartre, or let's say, let's put it the other way, it's Jean-Paul Sartre in his one, you know, lucid moment. And then again, we have to, you know, interpret it in such a way that we give him a lot of benefit of the doubt. And Led Zeppelin echo this statement from Krishna, where Krishna says that the living entity, the living entity, that means you, that means me, that means every individual person in existence. And that's a lot of individual souls. Purusha, that's the Sanskrit word for person. And, you know, there's Param Purusha, the Supreme Person, God, and then there's a small Purusha, you, me, all souls. So Purusha, Sukha, Sukha means happiness, Dukkha means unhappiness. So Purusha, Sukha, Dukkha, Nam, Brokritre, Hetur, Uchate. The soul alone, the soul alone, only the soul, only that Purusha is responsible for his or her own experience of happiness or distress. It's nobody's fault but mine. And therefore we take full responsibility. This verse really, um, you know how you calibrate a computer or you calibrate a system where it gets back, back on track. So this verse puts us back on track from, from well, from the possible lamentation that, that many of us be, you know, may be experiencing, me being, of course, one of them. You know, we tend to lament a lot. Souls lament, people lament in this world. It's a sad world to live in. I mean, Krishna says it himself. He says this world is a... As a sad world of sorrow, a temporary world of sorrow. Sorrow means you cry, right? So, so, so it's not a, it's not um, a surprise that that people are sad in this world or have passages of sadness. But this verse like puts us back on track, puts people back on track with a reminder that wait a second, wait a second, wait a second. It's nobody's fault but mine. The soul alone is responsible for his or her experience of happiness or distress. Right? Now, let me, I, I told you I would, I, speak, I would speak a little bit about Bhaktivinoda Thakur and, um, and his, his critique, not in the sort of a criticism, but yeah, I guess it has some element of criticism, but his critique of the idea of, of suffering according to what he perceived as a Christian paradigm. And in one of his books, I forget which one, but he mentions, he critiques this idea that man is suffering because of somebody else. Because of who? Because of the mistake of Adam and Eve. I, I, when I read that, I was like, wow, that's so profound. Bhakti Thakur, you know, he, he, Bhakti Thakur, for those who don't know who Bhakti Thakur is, sorry, Bhakti Thakur was the father and also spiritual teacher of the teacher of Prabhupada, the founder of the Hare Krishna movement. So we're talking about 1800s, mid 1800s. And, and so, so, so his, one of his, you know, he found great, uh, he, he worshiped, you know, he glorified Jesus and he was very sort of uh, non-sectarian and, and very appreciative of, of expressions of love of God in other traditions especially in Christianity, but one critique he had was this idea that man is suffering because of Adam and Eve's mistake, right? Adam and Eve are in, the, in, 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 in Eden, and then they, they, they bite from that apple, they make that mistake, and as a result of their mistake, all of humanity, including you, including me, has to suffer. 
right? So humanity in general is suffering because of Adam and Eve's mistake. Bhakti Thakur said no, no. And you can see why he would say no, because that contradicts Krishna's verse right here, what Krishna says right here in 1321 of Bhagavad Gita. The soul alone is responsible for his or her suffering or happiness. It's not, again, it's not an abusive father or an abusive mother, or it's not a, you know, an oppressive government, or it's not a, you know, a, a cheating man who, who ran away with your fortune. It's not, it's not anybody's responsibility or cause. Actually, they're just instruments. That's why, before I forget, Prabhupada said this famous statement, don't be angry with the instrument of your karma. Such a profound statement. Don't be angry. And, you know, I say that to myself because every day, not a day goes by when I'm like not you know, imagining what I could say to this person or that person, you know, and you mistreated me and you did that to me and that was cheating. And But Prabhupada said, don't be angry at the instrument of your karma. Don't be angry at the instrument of your karma. So it's not Adam and Eve's fault. It's not Adam and Eve's fault. That's just a, a wrong idea that we have to suffer because of somebody else's mistake. No. We are suffering. Souls suffer in this world because of their own act actions. And they enjoy also because of their own actions. And this brings up an issue that you know, we were discussing with Mahajwala. And I still have some, you know, I scratched my head about it. And I'm going to... I'm probably going to ask Ridainana Maharaj, one of my mentors, this question. Because, you know, there's been, there's psychological, there's studies in psychology about gratitude, positive psychology, about how, how when you practice the act of gratitude, you know, I am thankful, I am grateful that, no, 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 I am grateful that, no, 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 just expressing gratitude, even writing it down with like gratitude journals. Uh, scientific studies tend to show that people who, who have an, an attitude of gratitude tend to be happier in life anyway and tend to just perform better and just be happier people. So if the soul alone, as Krishna says here in Bhagavad Gita 13.21, is responsible alone for the experience of happiness and distress, then just as you... It's, it, it, it means it's useless to be angry at the instrument of your bad karma. We could theoretically say that it's also kind of illusory to thank instruments of your good karma. I'll give you an example. You know, I've been practicing. I, I think I, I had really nice parents. I'm grateful I had really nice parents. They lived, you know, they, they were divorced, but they did their best. And, you know, in spite of the circumstances, I, I'm, I'm very grateful <laughs> that I had good parents and even though I made this terrible financial you know uh, decision that I told you at the beginning by and that's the thing by whose grace by God's grace by their grace I have right now in my life enough money that I can for example rent a nice apartment in Mayapur and have nice food and even have AC and just you know have a scooter and just have a basically peaceful life without having to be in anxiety at least right now <laughs> about my finances so I've been practicing this thing, you know, about, okay, gratitude. And so I, I you know, I, I'm grateful. This money didn't come from the sky. It came, technically speaking, from a little bit from my father and mostly from my mother. She also passed away and she was Croatian um, 20 years ago. So she, thanks to her. So, 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 uh, but, but technically speaking, according to this verse again, 1321, I alone am responsible for the happiness. Let, let's say happiness is translated as, let's say, having a pretty... Uh, stable financial situation okay according to this verse that's that situation I have has come about through the instrument of for example my dear mother and father but according to this verse I'm just reaping the fruit the karma of some good thing I did in the past life because again if the soul alone is responsible for the experience of happiness and distress then, you know, the happiness that I'm experiencing or that anybody is experiencing comes for his or, from his or her past, quote-unquote, good deeds in a past life. So then, where is the, technically speaking, the, the, the room for gratitude? And that's where, this is an interesting question. 
because we do hear that you know people that, 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 that individuals should thank God, right? Um, so yes, perhaps we can explain it that in such a way that actually technically speaking, you know, someone did a little bit of pious activity, but God is very kind, so God is giving the person much more than he or she deserves, right? And similarly, you know, we hear this famous saying, like, you know, if a devotee of Krishna or someone devoted to God cuts his finger, technically speaking, according to the strict law of karma, he or she should have had his or her entire arm cut off, right? But because, again, because God is so kind, uh, he or she is, is experiencing only a token a little bit of, of the reaction that he or she should actually be experiencing, right? So this is a, I mean, I'll, I'll be honest, there's a little perplexing issue here. How do you, how do we avoid becoming hard-hearted and not expressing gratefulness to parents or to well-wishing friends or to teachers or, you know, for, for any good situation that we may be finding ourselves in if the soul alone is responsible for his or her experience of, um, of happiness or distress. Interesting. Interesting. So, this verse should remind you, should, you know, recalibrate you, so to speak, and remind you that, look, you know, um, it's nobody's fault but you. Or, and it also, in a way, you know, the good stuff that you're having in your life also is, is basically your, you're the cause for it. Right. And so next time, you know, you find yourself in a situation where, you know, whatever, someone steals your money or someone, you know, abuses you or, or someone just mistreats you. Now, it doesn't mean that one should remain in one situation. This is a small parenthesis I want to say. It's not that if you find yourself in a situation, for example, where you're being abused or where you're being fair, unfairly treated, you shouldn't like say, okay, well, hey, it's, you know, I'm the cause of this, so it's my karma, so I'll continue, you know, enduring it. No, you should do everything possible in your, in your capacity to avoid an unjust or a, a, an abusive situation, right? At the same time, though, when something beyond your control happens to you, you can take shelter in this verse, as painful as it sounds, you can take shelter in this verse and remind yourself, hey, look, it's not this person or that person's fault. It's nobody's fault but mine. Right? Therefore, you can tell yourself, don't be angry at this person or that, of that person because they're just instruments. They're not the cause of your happiness and distress. They're instruments, even though they, you know, it looks like it's somebody's really the cause of your suffering. Nuh uh That person is simply an instrument of your own karma of your own karma. Another thing you can do is in connection to this verse, you know, Bhakti Tirtha Swami used to talk about spiritual technology, right? For those who know Bhakti Tirtha Swami, an African-American, wonderful spiritual leader who passed away maybe 10 years ago, and he used to talk about, you know, spiritual technology. Well, for us and for you, spiritual technology means Krishna conscious philosophy. And of course, the practice of chanting Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. But it also means knowledge, transcendental knowledge, theology, theological concepts that, you know, reaffirm our faith and, and again, calibrate our compass. You know, also you can calibrate a compass and once you've calibrated the compass, you know where the north is and you, so you can, you know, know where you're going. So another verse that you can that you should, and that's in connection with this 1321, is a verse from the Srimad Bhagavatam 10th canto, which actually Prabhupada mentions in the Nectar of Devotion as being, as he says, this should be the motto of all devotees. And it's this famous verse that they no kam pam susamikshama no bunjana evat makritam vipa kam rit bhagapur bhirvitadam namaste jiveta yo mukti padesadayabad where Brahma, the god Brahma, is praying to Krishna after he's stolen the coward boys and Krishna has tricked him in return and he's just realizing, oh my God, I'm, I'm dealing with God here and I try to trick God. And so he offers these beautiful prayers, one of which is, my dear Lord, one who earnestly, earnestly means, you know, with sincerity and desire, one who earnestly waits for you to bestow your causeless mercy upon him, all the while, 
suffering the reactions to his past misdeeds and offering you respectful obeisances with his heart, body, and words inherits the kingdom of God because it has become his rightful claim. So that's the attitude you should have in life. That, my Lord, I'm going to be patiently waiting for you to give me your mercy. And I'm confident that whatever suffering I'm experiencing right now is, is the, the minimum required suffering for me to learn a lesson. I should actually be you know, experiencing much, much, much more suffering because of all the past misdeeds that I committed in this life or in past lives. Matter of fact, as a reminder to you, Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati Thakur, Prabhupada's guru, used to say that technically speaking, if God was not merciful to souls in this world, souls in this world could not even breathe. They would be so choked by the karmic reactions of what they did in the past lives. <laughs> but, you know, we're breathing <laughs> and we're eating nicely. Sometimes it's amazing how you like, you, sometimes I walk through Paris, through the streets of Paris, and I see these cafes. And, you know, with people like smoking and drinking and just laughing and, you know, I don't want to criticize, it's just an observation. Most of these people's lifestyle is violent because they're participating in, in the animal, you know, in, in killing animals, eating them, not even offering the milk products to Krishna, which we could argue is, is some attenuate, you know, uh, counter, counteractive uh, gesture. And still, it's like, wow, they just, there seems to be, they seem to be like so much having fun, you know, having so much fun. And technically speaking, they're, you know, they don't want, they don't want anything to do with God in general. They don't want God. They don't want Krishna. They don't want spirituality. They don't want to perform austerities for, for, you know, for, what is it? For, 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 for transcendence. Uh, and yet it seems like, you know, Krishna, God is just letting them have so much, so much freedom and so much fun. So it's funny, when I, when, I, when I look at the cafes in Paris, I, <laughs> the, the merciful nature of God sort of manifests, or I, I, let's, say, let's put it this way, I, I tend to, to remember about theoretically this idea that God is very merciful. For me, that's a, a, a great example right there. Where you, all these people just like laughing and smoking and drinking, ha ha ha, you know, the, the life of Paris, the Paris life that's so famous around the world. And it's like, dude, like you're eating meat, you're, you're killing animals, you're smoking, you're drinking. Your entire life is just centered around making money and just your, your, your sense pleasures. And where's God in the picture? Where's even charity? Sure, you know, a lot of them are. But generally speaking, you know, ça va pas loin, as they say in French. And yet, so much freedom. So, so coming back to this verse, Tate nous compam sous you can remind yourself and even pray to Krishna, please, like, I don't have faith that you're actually really kind. I don't really have faith that, you know, what I'm suffering right now, I should be suffering much, 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 much more. But, you know, I take it on faith that you are very kind. Krishna says in the ninth chapter, verse 29, I'm, I'm the best friend of all living entities. And, and therefore, because you're so kind, instead of complaining, right, instead of complaining or trying to take revenge or... Of course, there are certain places where you do have to, like, for example, if someone steals your money, you're allowed to take action. You're allowed to take legal action. If someone, you know, technically speaking, even according to the, you know, strict sort of Vedic culture, you can even kill someone who, who tries to kill you, right? The six types of aggressors that Prabhupada talks about in the Bhagavad Gita. But as in terms of an attitude, uh, you should have the attitude, okay, hey, you know, I must have, uh, I must have cheated someone out of his inher disinheritance in a past life. And now, it's payback time. Now it's payback time. So instead of blaming the world, I'm just going to eat humble pie. I'm just going to eat humble pie and, you know, try my best to move forward and to not make the same mistakes and, you know, be grateful for this purification and, and, and avoid situations that are, that are making the situation worse, of course. That's my responsibility. Um, but in terms of attitude, Tatenu Kampam Susi Meksha, my dear Lord, one who earnestly waits for you to bestow your causes, mercy upon him, all the while patiently suffering the reactions to his past misdeeds and offering you respectful obeisances with his heart, body, and words, inherits the kingdom of God. Inherits the kingdom of God. So this class has been sort of, you know, kind of pessimistic, but the positive side, the positive side is, realistically speaking, it's post-death. <laughs> it's it's post-death, 
and in this life too, as much as you know, one can be spiritually blissful and happy in a temporary miserable world. But the real bonus, the real bonus, what was, it was this devotee Vijay, he was to say, or he had heard that, you know, yeah, some guy had talked about the Hare Krishna and he said, you know, you guys, um, the, the payment plan, what is it? Yeah, the, 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 the payment or the, the wages is not very high, but the retirement plan is, is out of this world. <laughs> so, yes. You know, we do, you should believe that, hey, look, Krishna, Krishna talks about a place where every, every step is a dance. Where every step is a dance, where every word is a song. Where, where, where I'll be in total, like I'll be in a, in a spiritual body. You, you'll be in a spiritual body that has no defects of birth or old age or disease or, or, or death. That never grows old that is fully satisfied in, 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 in your relationship with, with, with God or Krishna, with every day being just ever fresh and ever more exciting and ever deeper in your, you know, spontaneous, you don't know what's coming next, adventure in love of God, being, you know, in the hands, in the loving embrace of, 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 a, of, a, of a most wonderful, wonderful friend who's just all powerful and all, all, you know, everything's possible for Krishna and yet he has a personal relationship with you. So that, that's, uh, you know, you should remind yourself, okay, this is what's waiting for me. If I can have this attitude, then this kingdom of God as described in the Brahma Samhita and as described in the 10th canto of the Bhagavatam is just around the corner. It's just around the corner. It's just around Janma Karma Chame Divyam Evam Yubeti Tatvathat Tyaktvade Ham Punar Janma Nayati Mam Iti Sojuna a time of leaving this body, one doesn't come back to this birth, you know, birth cycle, this this karma bondage or this this you know death bondage, but rather goes to 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 Krishna for an eternal exciting life, an eternal fun party with Krishna in the spiritual world. So that's that's positive. And so you may say, well, well, okay, fine, but you know, what about between now and the end of life? Like, I'm gonna, you know, live a miserable life, just waiting. Like, when, when, when am I gonna die? When am I gonna die? When am I gonna die? Well, in one way, yeah. <laughs> I mean, realistically speaking, not not a miserable life, but you know, when am I gonna die and hopefully go back to Krishna? That's that's a good meditation. I remember once I was walking with Rida Nanamarj, one of my this mentor of mine in Los Angeles, and he was really ups he was upset because of some some unjust treatment by some other devotees and he was he looked and he said it's not going to be difficult to go back to the spiritual world here's another thing he often says is you know if you don't like it go back to godhead <laughs> so so yeah so this world is you you know a miserable place and so therefore to live in expectation of a much 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 billion times much better situation after death that's not a cop-out. That's not a cop-out. And okay, between now and then, live in the mode of goodness as much as possible because the mode of goodness brings real material happiness. The highest possible material happiness is a sort of a sustainable long-term happiness which is found in the mode of goodness, sattva guna in Sanskrit, which means, you know, being clean, raise, rising, your, rising early, living a life free of, 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 of vices, um, eating fresh food offered to Krishna. That, that makes it, you know, all the more spiritual. But generally speaking, the mode of goodness is the platform of life in a miserable world where we can relatively be happier than on a platform of passion and the platform of ignorance. So, you know, yes, until that day when we die and we hopefully go back to Krishna, ultimately, Krishna, you know, devotees of Krishna were like, I just, even if I have to take birth again, so be it. I just want to love you and serve you. But, you know, you also have a faith that, well, you know, Krishna does promise that. So hopefully when I die, you know. Um, and until then, okay, you live in the mode of goodness. You, you live according to your nature. In other words, there's no question of suppressing your nature. You're an architect type. Do architecture if you can. If you're an artist, be an artist. If you're a musician, be a musician. If you're a speaker, be a speaker. If you're a manager, be a manager. Whatever you are in terms of the social order of life, engage that propensity and engage it for and engage it for Krishna. And that's where you, you know you experience to some degree a certain amount of spiritual happiness too.
and hopefully a lot of it, or sometimes you get big doses of it, you know. The problem with us is that we tend to, you know, we're kind of like, almost like what Krishna, like Arjuna, Krishna, Arjuna says in the Bhagavad Gita, we're like a riven cloud, we're like, we're like a cloud that's not there, not there, like we've, we've, you know, we've sort of said, okay, material life, at least, you know, the, 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 the vain pursuit of sense, of blind sense pleasures as the ultimate goal of life, we've theoretically given that up, we've theoretically accepted the premise that mm -mm, this is happiness in the mode of passion, there's much higher happiness than that what to speak of spiritual ecstasy, uh, right? But uh, we've got a lot of attachments, right? And so, you know, the chanting is maybe not as blissful as Rupa Goswami says it is, you know, one of the great saints in our tradition who says that, you know, every time I open my mouth I, I, and, and I hear the holy name of Krishna, I want to have a million, million mouths and a million ears so that I could hear and chant the sweet name of Krishna. We're not there. We're not there. There's a devotee in New York at the Bhakti Center. He printed a t-shirt that says, Chant Hare Krishna and be happy. And then in small print it says, Or at least chant Hare Krishna. <laughs> or at least, because you know, the, the happiness of, Woo, you know, yes, we are so happy. Look, we are so happy in Krishna consciousness. Yeah, there are moments like that. But most of us, you know, we're kind of like struggling to chant those rounds, you know, and to, to follow those principles and, 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 and to... We scrape, scrape for, for a few drops of mercy, which should show us how fallen we are because we should have faith that actually Lord Chaitanya is giving us a lot of mercy. And even in spite of Lord Chaitanya giving us a lot of, a lot of mercy, we're still like, you know, like, what's that story when Prabhupada was in the London temple in Soho, in Soho or Bury Place, he saw some japa bags and meditation beads hanging on some uh, doorknob. And he said, whose beads? are crying there. <laughs> so yeah, it's, it's not like we wake up in the morning and woo, oh my God, it's 3.30 a.m. and I'm so happy because right now, I mean, I just couldn't wait to get up and, and put my hand in that bead back and start chanting the sweet, sweet, sweet holy name of Krishna. We're not really there yet. At the same time, we're also not like, you know, what is this Krishna consciousness, useless waste of time? No, we, we do chant and we do try to follow, you know, moral principles and we do offer our food to Krishna and we do try to tell others about Krishna. So that shows that we're also, you know, getting some reciprocation from Krishna, right? So it's nobody's fault but mine. We are thrown here and it's our responsibility and Krishna says, uh, the soul alone is, is responsible for the experience of happiness and distress. So before finishing, uh, I'll just give a minute here and ask if there's anybody who has any, any, any comments or any, any questions. Um, and um, if you do, then please write it, I guess, somewhere in the, in the, in the, comment, in the, in the comment box. Salut, Mikael. And um, I'll just wait like 30 seconds for a comment or two or a question. And uh, if not, then I'll just say a few more words and end for today. It's a very good point about humility, humility's attitude. Thank you, yeah. Okay, so listen, um, just wrap it up. In short, it's kind of like what we say every time, right? We should be, we should be grateful <laughs> because the spiritual things that happen in our, in our life, that's, that's, you know, we, we have free will, but that's, that the, the, the spiritual gifts that we have in our life are actually gifts from God. We should believe that. And so if there's really something that we can be really grateful for, it's whatever spiritual uh, blessings we happen to be living with. Is one surrenders or as one takes shelter of me, I reward him accordingly, Krishna says. So we should have faith that, that Krishna has been reciprocating with us um, a lot more than we deserve. You know, for the little bit of devotion that we've shown Krishna, Krishna has like reciprocated tons. Typical, typical of Lord Chaitanya. So in that mood of gratitude, we should, we should continue to just 
chant Hare Krishna and try to catch ourselves when we go into you know these these self-destructive modes of of of, of just wanting to wanting revenge and and I, you know, I'm preaching to myself here of 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 being angry at others and wanting 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 to harm others because they're so-called the cause of our suffering when when you know we should remind ourselves that hey actually I'm we are we are the cause of us being here and, and suffering or enjoying so let us continue in a humble mood of um, of just chanting Hare Krishna and sharing the chanting with others Jai thank you very much all glories to Prabhupada all glories to Lord Chaitanya all glories to the sweet holy name of Krishna and uh, thank you Hare Krishna